Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Josh with another episode of Keep It Techie, where we make Linux simple, fun, and super accessible. And today, we're diving into a command that every Linux user should know. And that's whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro. And this command is called the history command. So stick with me as we break it all down step by step. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm logged into one of my virtual machines. This is Ubuntu 24.04. But before we get started on the demonstration, what is the history command? Now, at its core, it's your Linux time machine. It basically shows you the commands you've run in the past, which can save your life when you're trying to troubleshoot, repeat a process, or even just remember what you did last time. And the history command keeps a record of every command you enter into the terminal. And it's linked to a hidden file, depending on the shell that you're using. Like for instance, if you're using bash, then there's a hidden file called .bash underscore history. If you're using like Z shell, then it'll be stored under a hidden file named .zs8 underscore history. But don't worry, we're gonna explore how to get the most out of this tool. So let's go down and pull up the terminal so I can show you guys the first thing I always show you guys Guys when it comes to these commands and that is the man page and i'm 100 sure history has a man page like i told you guys in other videos some commands don't have a manual but I'm sure history does so let's go down and press man and then history and press enter and this will give you all the information about the history command as you can see it says gnu history library just a description, a history expansion. This all breaks down the history of it. And also some event designators. You can go through and search by strings, word designations. It's a whole bunch of options in here. I recommend you guys go through it. Check it out for yourself. That way you can get the most out of using the history command. But you're probably wondering why this command is so important. Picture this, you're configuring a server or working on a project and you've run a bunch of commands. Then you realize you need to run one of those commands again, but you forgot the syntax. Instead of racking your brain, just hit the history command and boom, you'll get your answer. Because this command is all about saving time and making life easier. Plus it's great for documenting your work or even identifying security concerns, like spotting unauthorized commands in the history. Hey y'all, Josh here from Keep It Techie. Real quick, let's talk about Rocky Linux. This distro is the real deal if you're looking for a solid, enterprise-ready Linux solution. It all started after Red Hat dropped CentOS and Gregory Kurtzer, the OG co-founder of CentOS, brought us Rocky Linux as a tribute to his late friend, Rocky McGough. This is community-driven, open-source software at its finest, and it's already making waves. Rocky Linux 8.10 is out now, giving you that enterprise-grade stability without all the Red Hat licensing headaches. So whether you're running a home lab or a full-on data center, Rocky's got your back. So if you want to keep it open source and keep your data secure, check out Rocky Linux. The link's down in the description of the video. It's built by the community, for the community, and it's here to stay. Stay techy, y'all. All right, so let's go down and quit this. All you have to do is type Q, and let me get through and show you guys a few practical examples of using the history command on your system. So the first one I wanted to show you guys is just history. And I probably don't have much on this system this is uh, yeah i have about 100 commands that i ran because i installed lm studios so this is how you view your history it will print out everything in your history if you run his command like this with no options or anything now let me show you guys how to do something that's super cool with the history command you can actually find whatever command you're looking for and you can run that command by the numbers and let me show you guys what I mean. So I'm gonna run the 100 command, which is the man history command that we ran. All you have to do is type in exclamation point and then the number, so 100, and then press enter. And that's a quick way of running or repeating a command that you already ran in your history. Super cool, right? 
And let me show you guys another one. So let's run 87, which is that DU command that we ran in one of my previous videos. So all you have to do is do the exclamation point and then 87, which is that command we want to run. Press enter. It'll go through and run that DU command again. So like I said, this is basically magic for repetitive tasks. Now, let me show you guys how to do a little bit of filtering. And the way you do it with history is by grepping or piping the history command into the grep command. And I'll show you guys that right fast. All you have to do is, let's say we wanna see something that we installed recently. So we can type history and then let's do a pipe and then let's type the grep command and then let's search for something. Let's search for uh, apps and I'll put it in quotes so we can find it and press enter and boom, it'll pull up all the times we ran apt. And it even pulls in the recent command. That's one thing about history as you're typing commands, even for history, it will log those commands. And what makes this super cool is you can search for, let's say a long command that you're written out. Let's say you LS the directory, but you don't remember the full path. Let's run history and then let's grep it again. And we wanna look for the LS command and boom, we ran LS, but you don't know what you actually looked at. So you press that. And boom, that's that long directory that we didn't remember. So we can run that again right fast. So let's type exclamation point and then 83. So let's run that command again. And boom, that'll give us the information that we're looking for. We looked for when we ran that LS command a while ago. Now, let me show you another option right fast. Let's clear right fast. But basically, I want to show you guys how to clear your history if you don't want it anymore. Let's say you want to just start with a fresh slate. That's if you're sharing a system and you don't want someone snooping at the commands that you ran, you can use the history that C command, and this will clear everything in your current session. So, so let's type history and then that C and press enter, and it'll clear your history for you. Now, let me show you guys how to pin history to the file immediately. Let's say you're running a bunch of commands and you want to just go down and get them into the actual file that holds your history. So let's just run like, I don't know, a couple commands because it's basically been cleared out by running a history dash C. So we need to run some commands. Let's just run updates. So sudo apt updates. Let's go through and run. And right now it's like your history is not actually stored in the file yet when you're running all these commands that you're running. And then let's, I don't know, let's just run an LS right fast or something like that. And then let's do a CD documents. Boom, and then let's LS again, and then let's CD again. That way we add a couple things to the history. So like I stated by default, history updates when you exit the session. But if you want it to save right away, you could just type history dash A, and it'll append to the file. So let me show you guys, right? So history dash A, and press enter, and that'll append everything within this session. So if we run history, and of course I had to type it in, but history, you'll see all those there, which they will show up anyway, but they're stored in the file now when you hit a pin because it typically doesn't write it until you exit out of the terminal and close that session. And just to show you guys how that actually works, if I open it up again and let's open up a new session. And actually, let me just run a couple of commands right fast. So let's run sudo apps updates or let's run an upgrade right fast and type in our sudo, our password. And if we open up the terminal again, let's open up another one right fast. Let's see new window and I'll just zoom in right fast while I'm still going with that upgrade. But and then maybe they have updated this thing. But I know when you run history, like right now, it won't show that you see how it doesn't show the pseudo apps, whatever in there that I'm running over here in this other terminal. You won't see that command until I close the session. That's why sometimes when you go in and, and run the history and let's say you got two terminals open and you're running different commands in different terminals. If you run the history command in another session, you won't see those changes until this other session closes. So I just wanted you guys to understand that you see how it doesn't show that pseudo apt upgrade yet. That's why. And so there you have it, folks, the history command in all its glory. And I know I only showed you guys a couple commands. I just wanted to introduce it to you guys so you guys can play around with it. Look at the man page, check it out for yourself. But that'll get you started by showing just those basic options and commands on using the history command. So whether you're tracking down like past commands, automating tasks or securing your system, this command is an absolute must have in your arsenal. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you smash that like button, hit the subscribe button and share this with someone who's learning Linux. Make sure you drop a comment down below and let me know your favorite command or if you've got a topic you want me to cover next. And as always, thank you for tuning in to Keep It Techie, helping you get into tech one command at a time. Stay safe, stay productive, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.
Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech.